everyone, welcome back to Relax with Animal Facts. I am Steph Wolf and today I am going to be learning with you about our furry, scaly, or possibly even slimy friends. And in today's case, it is definitely going to be a microscopic friend of ours because we are covering the oh-so-wonderful tardigrade. This, of course, is a very special listener episode dedicated to Marley, Vicky, Taylor, Artemis, Malcolm, and a user named GMS. If you would like to help the show's mission of making more people wondrous of animals while helping them relax, you can go to patreon.com slash relaxwithanimalfacts or just click the Patreon link in the show's description. On there, you can find plenty of exclusive episodes, intro-free episodes. We just covered the Great Auk this week, and it was so cool to learn about. That is an extinct animal, if you didn't know. And you can even sign up for a free trial, check out the stuff, and if you don't like it, it's hassle-free. I would also like to give a shout-out to George Vlad for the ambiances used in this episode. His audio work is in the description, and you should check him out. And now, let us begin to wind down a little bit. If this is your first time joining us on an adventure, I welcome you with open arms to the Animal Podcast family. And if you are returning, you know exactly what I am going to be asking of you. I have three primary exhortations for you. The first is to grab a microscope. If you don't have one, don't worry, one will be provided for you. We are certainly going to be needing those for where we are going today. My second exhortation is that you realize perhaps where you are carrying some tension. If you've been listening for a long time, you've probably realized by now that everyone has a pattern of tension. For some, it'll be in the neck, some in the hands or the head, but maybe you don't know. And in that case, you can always just start from the bottom of your feet and scan up mentally up towards the top of your head, kind of just relaxing as you go. The feet, then the calves, then the legs. And that is a great way of discovering where exactly we hold tension. Everyone is different. And the third thing I encourage you to do is to give your mind permission to wander and journey with me into the microscopic world of one of our oceans where the tardigrade resides. easy to get lost in this microscopic world, and this is a historic first for the Relax with Animal Facts podcast in which we are going into a microscopic one rather than just out there. And this is a world that can only stir our awe for the natural world. When we have scuba dived into the waters of the ocean or cut our way through the thick brush of Australian forests, we were also, by extension, visiting these places, but we visited them as giants, and today we visit them as, well, visitors. Beneath every square inch of this world is another one, a really small one, that if we just look close enough, we will find some wondrous things. Tardigrades are also called water bears. They're basically microscopic eight-legged animals that have been in outer space and would probably survive any kind of apocalypse. The reason they gained the nickname water bears is because they do look like microscopic little bears. Tardigrades are their common name, but the scientific name is tardigrada. And unfortunately, I can't delve too deep into this without ruining the last fact of the episode, which is the etymology of their name, and so I am going to postpone that fact. These are little omnivores in this microscopic world. The size of this creature can range from between 0.002 to 0.05 inches, that's about 0.05 to 1.2 millimeters in length. 
but they are most typically relegated to the length of 0.04 inches, about 1 millimeter long. Now, one thing that contributes to their being microscopic is that they're composed of only 1,000 cells. Just to put that into some perspective, the average adult person has 32 trillion cells. That is a thousand billion times 32. And so while a thousand cells might seem like a big number, it is very small. We can learn something about their nickname, the water bear. They live anywhere where there is liquid water. So that means lakes, rivers, oceans, even the watery film that covers moss. They have a reputation for being tough, and there is a reason for that. They can survive at altitudes over 19,600 feet, that's about 6,000 meters, and they can survive at more than 15,000 feet or 4,700 meters below the surface of the ocean. They can survive at extremely high and low altitudes, along with everything that goes with that, pressure, food sources, etc. There are more than 1,100 species of these tiny invertebrates. They are pretty close, genetically, of arthropods, like insects and crustaceans. Let me just clarify a term, invertebrate, in case you don't know. All this means is that the creature has no backbone. They do not have a spinal column like we do. We are vertebrates. The water bear or tardigrade has a well-developed head region and a short body that is made of four segments fused together. Each of these four segments have a pair of short, stout, and unjointed limbs. And generally speaking, at the end of these limbs are going to be several sharp claws. Of course, like a bear. At the time of this recording, maybe it will change, but the tardigrade has no specialized organs for the actions of circulation and respiration. Respiration meaning breathing. In our case, our specialized organs are our lungs, and in terms of circulation, our specialized organ is a heart. Now, of course, the heart and the lungs work together for both respiration and circulation, but the water bear has neither of these. They still, however, need to move blood and oxygen throughout themselves, and this is done by a fluid that is in their body cavity. Through a process known as diffusion, it transports those great things where they need to go. It is worth mentioning that while it is correct to say that tardigrades can withstand some extreme environments, not all of them are in extreme environments. Some will have their capacities tested and some won't. In addition to being able to handle high altitudes and low depths and high pressures, they can also withstand extreme temperatures. We are talking about as low as minus 328 degrees Fahrenheit, that's minus 200 degrees Celsius. That means they can almost handle Canada, and they can also withstand temperatures hotter than 300 degrees Fahrenheit, or 148.9 degrees Celsius. And this means that they can actually just survive boiling water. They can also survive high amounts of radiation, and in terms of the pressure of the ocean, they can take up to six times the pressure at the deepest part of the ocean. I'm just grateful that the tardigrade is microscopic and not the size of a grizzly. That thing would be the animal version of Superman. It's basically indestructible. It can even survive some extremely dry and dehydrated climates. Can a grizzly bear survive the vacuum of space? Well, none of us can, but the tardigrade can. Their anatomy is much to thank for this extreme resilience. Their body is small, there are no bones, and they are only supported by a hydrostatic skeleton, which is just a fluid-filled compartment called a hemolyph. And though they do not have a vertebrate's spinal cord like we have, they still have a ventral nervous system. This nervous system sends signals between the tardigrade's brain and their body, which is functionally equivalent to a vertebrate's spinal cord. 
In addition to their anatomy, they are also able to withstand these conditions by using a super cool animal mechanism known as cryptobiosis. They expel more than 95% of the water that they have in their bodies, retracting their head and legs, curling into a dehydrated ton. When the water bear is in this dehydrated state, it is known as a ton. It is a state of suspended animation in which they dry themselves out, appearing as a lifeless ball. You can look at this maybe as a sort of hibernation, but one in which their metabolism declines to as little as 0.01% of its normal rate. That is a 10,000% decrease in metabolic function. They can survive in this state for decades, years and years. Let me just clarify that tons is spelt T-U-N-S, not T-O-N-S, like the weight measurement. And scientists in 2016 brought back two tons and a tardigrade egg that had been in cryptobiosis for more than 30 years. There was even a report in 1948, though some are skeptical, of a researcher in Italy who said he revived a ton from a dried out piece of moss that was over 120 years old. But we can exercise a bit of skepticism here because no other researcher has since been able to do that. But the 30 year revival or bringing back is legit. Some researchers have employed more extreme methods of testing the tons. Desiccated tardigrades, desiccated just means that they are super dry and in that ton state, were put into a high-speed gun and shot. These dried out tardigrades would be traveling at 3,000 feet per second, about 900 meters per second, and surviving a crushing impact of about 1.14 gigapascals of pressure. That is over 165,000 pounds per square inch. Simply incredible. Tardigrades eat by sucking up fluids from cells that are in plants, algae, and fungus. They puncture the cell walls with stylets that they have in their mouth. They are like little needles, and then like the water bear vacuums that they are, they hoover up the liquid that is inside. Another reason for their resiliency is that they have a unique protein in their bodies known as DSUP. That is short for damage suppressor. This protein protects the DNA from being harmed by things like ionizing radiation, which is in vegetation, water, and soil. But here is some conflicting evidence. A 2020 study published in the journal Scientific Reports found that some tardigrades in water temperatures of just about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, about 37.8 degrees Celsius, can die in just one day. Ricardo Neves, who was a co-author of the study, said that tardigrades are definitely not the almost indestructible organism as advertised in many popular science websites. Now this happens frequently in the literature. Experts will disagree with one another. But in the case of this study, co-authored by Ricardo C. Neves, I am a little bit skeptical of their conclusions given the wealth of evidence to the contrary. There are pieces in National Geographic that contradict this, Scientific American, Smithsonian Magazine. Now granted, I do not have the time to comb through all of the scientific literature on this, but there seems to be more in support of this organism being almost indestructible. Tardigrades are also pretty unique as regards reproduction. They can reproduce with a mate or without one. I won't go into the detail of the process because it's not really necessary here, but that information is in the resources if you want to explore it further. The eggs will take about 40 days to hatch, or sometimes as long as 90 days if they were in a desiccated or a very dried out state. One other really interesting fact is that a spacecraft was carrying thousands of tardigrades when it crash-landed on the moon in April of 2019. Experiments that were done later showed that the animals probably died on impact. 
But that may not be the case. We don't really know. But that may not be the case. We can't really know for sure. Maybe there are water bears on the moon right now. At least I'd like to think so. And now to the name of the animal. Tardigrade and water bear. What do they mean or where do they come from? The tardigrade was first described as a little water bear by a German pastor in 1773 who called them Kleiner Wasserbar, or little water bear. But as regards the word tardigrade, this word can actually be used as an adjective. It is not just describing the animal. The word means slow going, slow moving, or having a slow pace or motion. This word has been used as early as the 1620s being imported from French. This goes all the way back to Latin tardigradus, which means slow paced, from tardis, slow, and gradi, to walk, go, or step. And we still use that tardis word today. If I run in late to my class, I can say, I'm sorry, I apologize for my tardiness. I apologize for my being tardy. What I am saying is, I'm sorry for being late, or I'm sorry I was slow in coming to class. Latin and Greek pervade our language in wonderful ways, so the tardigrade is basically being called slow moving, which of course they are. Maybe this dad joke is more harmful to the tardigrade than the vacuum of space, so let us see. What did the microbiology student get for being late to class? A tardy grade. Now, I have no way of proving this, but I am almost positive everything within a 500-foot radius of me has perished, including my spirit. And now, let us move on to the review portion of the show. This short and sweet review was written by WillowCat09, writing all the way from Canada. Canada represent. And Willow writes, I love the relaxing songs. Thank you so much for taking the time, Willow, to write that review. I'm very glad that you like the relaxing song, and I'm sorry that I cut into it with my voice after just a few seconds. One thing that I noticed Willow didn't include was a review out of six. We all know that this has become the new standard of rating. I need to know, is it a 5.5 out of six? Perhaps a 5.98 out of six? This is of crucial importance. But if the show helps you at all, leaving a review out of six is one of the biggest ways that you can help the show grow. It can take you somewhere between 30 seconds to two minutes to write a review, again, that is out of six, and that can help more people find the show, it can give me crucial feedback, and in general, it's just a great thing. If you would like more Relax With Animal Facts, go to patreon.com slash relaxwithanimalfacts. There are plenty of exclusive episodes and new ones being released every week. We just did an extinct animal, we have a bunch of different series, and you can support the show you love while getting more of it. If you would like to request an animal for the show, you can do so by going to the Submit and Animal Request tabs. If you would like to reach out to me, Steph Wolf, for any other reason, you can do so by sending an email to relaxwithanimalfacts at gmail.com or by going to the Instagram relaxwithanimalfacts and sending a direct message. A big shout out to George Vlad for the ambiance used in today's episode. His work is in the description and I encourage you to go subscribe and check him out. The resources used in this episode came from NationalGeographic.com, LiveScience.com, Britannica.com, and EtimOnline.com. What an amazing animal we have learned about today. Why is it that a microscopic animal is given these characteristics that would make a bigger one just absolutely unstoppable? This animal is super special and I'm so thankful I got to learn about it with you. And I look forward to our next journey together with the next animal. Take care.